Well, it feels like Christmas. Guys, check it out. So yeah, today's video, we are going to be introducing some new kayaks to the lineup. Um, just made my way and just got back from Kayak City up in Citrus Heights, California, just outside of Sacramento. And we picked up two new boats. We've got right here the Native Watercraft Falcon 11. And right next to it, we've got a familiar boat if you guys have been following the channel. We've got another Slayer Max 10. Gotta go orange, gotta go with the copperhead. I don't know, I've had an orange boat for like seven, eight years now, so that's just my kayak color of choice apparently. But yeah, look at this happy family we have. My goodness. So I've been wanting to get multiple kayaks for a while now. I just never had the space to, to have more than one kayak. And now that we've got the, uh, the garage, the bass cave, the kayak corner, we have more space to actually have some different kayaks and for me personally kayaks are kind of like you know rods you don't bring necessarily just one rod out while you go fishing you have different rods different tools for the situations you're in small rivers levee launches smaller bodies of water so that's kind of the idea of having multiple kayaks for me at least different tools for different situations or different kayaks for different bodies of water and that's exactly what I feel will uh, be able to accomplish because if you look here's the kayak we've been rocking for a long time and don't get me wrong this is a fantastic kayak it's my favorite kayak fishing kayak ever made it's the native watercraft titan 10.5 oh, we've got some history in this boat we've used it for so many tournaments it's gone across the country but it is a big boat it is a big boat it's got a lot of weight to it it's got a lot of accessories you know we put the torpedo 1103 on it we've got a big seven inch graph 40 amp hour battery this is our tournament rig and for bigger bodies of water. Kind of going down the line, I feel like we've really got a good mid-size kayak and then a small kayak, our bare bones kayak. But as far as the mid-size kayak, this is the Slayer Max 10. Now back in New York, you guys remember if you follow the channel back in New York in about May, we had a Slayer Max. We spent the whole trip outfitting that boat and putting it on the water and it, and it was great. And I mentioned this in that video, but this boat, the Slayer Max 10 is like a hybrid between the Titan, the Slayer Propel 10 and the original Slayer Propel 13. And it really does accomplish a blend of those kayaks. But the big thing is it's a lot smaller, a lot lighter than the Titan, but still packs a lot of these features. I mean, I can probably, you know, pick that up with one hand. It's not easy, but there's no way I'm doing that with a Titan. Like I said, wanted to have a mid-sized kayak for different bodies of water, different applications, and we'll probably outfit this, you know, very similar to how we outfitted the one in New York. And the kayak that uh, I'm really excited about is the Falcon, the Falcon 11. This is as bare bones as you can get, as small as you can probably get for a fishing kayak nowadays. We do not have the traditional pedal drive. We do not have a motor, and we're gonna keep it that way. We're gonna keep this kayak as bare bones as we possibly can super simple this might be a good pond boat maybe even a river boat but something just so lightweight you know we say we have these you know kayaks we can grab and go with but that you know it really depends this is truly one of those boats where i'll bring two rods a couple of bags of plastics maybe some planos and just get out and go so really excited to have something that kind of brings i guess back the root of kayak fishing is just the standard kayak but i'll tell you what this video is probably going to be one of those videos that's all over the place ultimately for this video i really want to show you how we outfit these kayaks how we rig them up and then how they perform on the water we've used this before obviously in new york but this one this one will be cool so that is the video for today let's uh take one last look and we'll get to rigging these guys up
All right, guys. So I um, decided for uh, for this video specifically, we're gonna focus on the boat that I've never used, which is the uh, the Falcon 11. Uh, right behind me, like I've shown, we've got the Slayer Max. I'm not gonna bore you with uh, doing that exact same build again. But if you are interested in how I am going to outfit this, I will link in the video right here where you can where you can find that setup and how we rigged it up. But uh, I will use this, of course, in California. And once it's all rigged up and set up again, uh, we'll go over it, take it out on the water try it on the delta today like i said we are focusing on the falcon 11. really the focus of this boat was to add as little as possible i think we've done a pretty good job yeah we'll just start at the front it comes with a nice hatch system you got a lot of storage space in here you throw some rods in there maybe some dry bags not sure i don't think i'm gonna need this for the first trip but it is nice to have and of course you uh just lock this down by pulling these tabs over like so and we got a nice bungee system here, which we'll be able to tuck our paddle up underneath. I added this little grip right here, a little roto grip so we can rotate it. Nice little storage spot to put the paddle when you're just resting it. And then, like I said, we can tuck the other end of the paddle up underneath or just really rest it on the front hatch. Another hatch system that I really like is this guy right here, kind of the center console. So, of course, you flip it up can put whatever you want in here. I'm just putting miscellaneous stuff in here, like sunscreen, sunglasses, some scissors, terminal tackle box. But I do know that this is also an area that you can put wiring and fit your transducer. They have a dedicated spot under this boat for a transducer and you can put your transducer under there and then your wiring will go through there if you want it. And then you could of course just mount your graph on the provided gear track. We're not putting a graph on this. Well, we are kind of, I'll show you that in a bit, but right here for the gear track, we've just utilized another GoPro attached to some external power. So this guy will run pretty much eight hour, eight, nine hours. Same thing I use on the uh, the Titan, but obviously a different mounting system. So that'll be another camera that we'll run. We'll run the chest mount like always. Yeah, three rods. I think three rods is all we're gonna bring tomorrow. Frog, punch, and a buzz bait. Go big or go home, I guess. So coming around, talking about a fish so, as I've mentioned many times, I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. Yes, we could put our graph, we could put our Ray Marine on here, but I figured I'd use what I already have. And uh, I do have history with this guy right here, a little deeper unit. So this is the deeper chirp. Basically, it's your portable fish finder. And we got this new mount that they just came out with. See if we can do this with one hand. Pretty cool, it's got a bunch of joints so you can articulate the mount however you want and your phone will slide right in here. And then when I wanna see what's underneath me, we've got this tethered right to the seat. We'll drop it down in the water, we'll connect to the app. And for me personally, when I'm on the Delta, I like a graph mainly to see depth and bottom composition. A lot of people say you don't need a graph for the Delta, but I personally have come to really like a graph just knowing what's underneath me exactly. Yeah. Real simple and uh, allows us to have access to a graph uh, when we when we need it. As far as the seat goes, looks like this boat has two different positions for seating. You can do the high position, which we have it in right now, and then you can actually take the seat and drop it down about, uh, I'd say that's about an inch if you wanna get a little bit lower center of gravity. We did pick up a new PFD this year, and this one was specifically for an anticipated smaller craft. This is the NRS Ninja. Less pockets, but a lot smaller, less bulky than the, the Chinook series. Again, just a smaller PFD, keeping everything as small and as lightweight as possible. Also, another nice thing about this kayak is the uh, optional, and it comes with wheel in the keel, not only for transporting your kayak, but also maybe you're dragging this through some woods, some wilderness, trying to get over to another pond, whatever. That's gonna help just make this easier to, to move around. Around. So we got a nice generous space back here. We've got some bungee. We could have thrown a crate in here, but I'm keeping it simple. One box of baits, one bag of plastics. And that's just gonna sit right there. So that is the tour of the native Falcon 11. I think uh, there's only one more thing to do now and that's uh, actually test it out on the water, see how it performs. I will see you guys tomorrow morning for our first trip out in the Falcon 11. Should be fun. Dude. Definitely passes the stability test. Feels very stable. And by the way, I have no clue where I'm going, so hopefully there's still water back here. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh man. There we are. Skunk out of the boat. Skunk out of the Falcon 11 kayak. Oh, that's what we came for right there. Little frog love. Thank you, sir. That certainly didn't take long. That's what I'm hoping we can do pretty much all day. Oh God, oh my God, ow, oh. frog bites on. So it's kind of interesting as I'm finally at an area where I can't see the bottom. So this is kind of what I was talking about, why we'd want to have a graph just to see exactly what we're looking at. It's pretty simple as far as how we're going to do this. Let's take our deeper right over the side. And once that's in the water, it actually, well, it already connected, so that's good. We'll open the app. You can throw it right here for a second. Let's take this guy right here. Dude, that's legit. So, you know, obviously the water clarity is a little dingier back here. So you don't really know. I mean, you could do the old stick your paddle or rod in there and feel it, but at least this gives you an idea as to the actual depth and some bottom composition. It's pretty cool. We got our three rods today. We got the frog, the punch, and then we got a buzzbait rod, but this rod will double for us as a, a chatterbait rod too. If we need to put a chatterbait on here, the punch rod, it could be a jig rod. Nothing finesse though, all pretty much power fishing techniques. But so far, two bites on the frog with not much fishing at all. So I think that's probably a good sign. Kind of curious. Do kind of want to see what's a little how deep this channel is. You know, I'd say the bites we've got so far have been in like six inches of water right off the bank where there's actually some deeper pockets it looks like in the shade. So eh, it's like getting down to four foot in the middle of the channel here. Just make that big. That's pretty cool. It gives us uh, really good information. Oh, sounded like an okay one. Let's see if it comes back for seconds. Come on, I know you want that frog. What? If we don't get a frog blow up in this stuff, I will be baffled. It's like literally perfect. Shade pocket, little break in the current, backlash. Dude, that looks so good. I think I'm gonna just tuck up in the weeds here. And definitely what I miss about one of these smaller kayaks, especially on the Delta, is just getting up. Slide right in. Position. There we go. Should be golden. <laughs> Little fella. I saw him though. You can tell they're going to hit the frog today because they're subsurface. They're just below the mat. That one I saw like two feet away from the frog. That's how you want them to be setting up when the frog bites on. Oh, golly, that was a better one.
<laughs> Got him. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. Woohoo. Easy. Oh, that is just too much fun. <laughs> oh my god. I crushed it. That one came for seconds. Oh no. No, I got a backlash. He still has it. Backlash, backlash frogfish. It's not my first time doing that. I need something a little thicker. Mats are getting just a wee bit thick. All right, guys, you ready for the, the tackle trunk? Plastic bag. Going super old school. Yeah, seems a little heavier. Super duper old school. And just, you know, I guess just anticipating one potentially misses it. Give it a little, a little flavor. It should be money. Should be. Interesting. Oh, there's one with it. There's like three with it, actually. Well, chatter love. Top water seems to have died down. Except I just heard something eat right there. What's going on? This fish, I think, have moved kind of off the bank towards the middle. I'm guessing. There we go. They're out in the middle now. Yeah, they've just shifted a little bit. Man, he thumped it. I thought it was way bigger than that. Oh my god, there's a big one. Oh my lord. Oh my god. Oh, this is gonna be a mess, potentially. Don't come off. No pedals, no pedals. Oh my god. Come here, come here. That's better. <laughs> oh boy. That was fun. That's a rush. Choked the frog. It's a nice one, man. Thick, thick fish. Finally got a good one. What a fun fish. First time out in the Falcon 11, and like we were saying, the right tool for the job today. I mean, today we were definitely fishing some skinny water, some areas that uh, we needed to drag this guy up 
and through. I hate to say it, but definitely would not be able to do what we did today in that boat. That's just too big, too heavy. I was a little unsure about that little wheel in the keel, but towards the end of the day, when we did have to drag that through some, some hard bottom, that little wheel definitely helped. Good, fun day. Got on some frogfish, so that's awesome. I mean, we can see right here. We definitely, uh, we got her pretty uh, worked in, that's for sure. Overall, really happy with this boat for the first time out on the water. And it is nice to have this Falcon 11 now in the arsenal. And really just kind of go back to how, you know, I'm sure all of us or most of us started kayak fishing. It was a simple kayak, lightweight, something you could pick up and drag around and, and go out and catch some fish. Questions, comments on the Falcon 11, leave them down below and I will do my best to get back to them. As always, I thank you guys for coming along, for tuning in, and I will catch you guys in the next one.